In July 2012, governments from around the world will convene at the UN in New York to discuss the terms of an arms trade treaty. It is vital that this treaty places appropriate safeguards on development. To put it bluntly, the irresponsible transfer of arms and ammunition has a fundamental impact on development. I'm here today to introduce you to a new Oxfam paper entitled Armed Robbery, how the poorly regulated trade in arms is paralyzing development. Now, in the wrong hands, arms and ammunition absolutely devastate communities. They shut down schools, they place an immeasurably high strain on health systems, they chase away investment, and they fundamentally weaken the rule of law, good governance, and ultimately security. These are all very, very compelling reasons why the arms trade treaty must embed development at its very core. Now, the statistics paint a very troubling picture. Oxfam's research has found that in some of the world's most fragile countries, military expenditure continues to rise. In fact, sometimes as high as three times that of expenditure in health and education. In fact, between 2009 and 2010, the world's most fragile countries accounted for nearly 7% of, of global arms sales, while at the same time accounting for less than 1% of the global share of wealth. Over that same time span, these fragile countries also experienced an increase in their military expenditure, sometimes averaging as high as 15%. Our research has found that the notoriously secretive nature of the arms trade has allowed corruption to flourish in all corners of the world. Many governments can continue to be very secretive about their defense budgets. In fact, our research shows that all low-income and lower-middle-income countries who spend more than 10% of their central budget on defense continue to experience high levels of corruption. Now, Transparency International's recent estimate suggests that the total cost of corruption in the defense sector amounts to something to the tune of 20 billion US dollars per year. Let's put this into context. This was the total amount that was pledged by the G8 donors at the L'Aquila summit in 2009 to end world hunger. The irresponsible transfer of arms and ammunition undermines development in four very specific ways. Firstly, when the transfer of conventional arms and ammunition either initiate, prolong, or exacerbate armed conflict and armed violence. Secondly, when arms transfers affect prospects for peace and undermine reconciliation efforts and long-term peace-building efforts. Thirdly, when expenditure on arms increases national and public debt or has a major impact on funds that are available for expenditure on health and education. And finally, when expenditure on arms involves or exacerbates systemic corruption. Now, there are five ways in which specific language can be used to protect development. Firstly, the preamble of the treaty must recognize all relevant development-related legal obligations, such as the UN Charter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and all other relevant covenants and conventions. Secondly, the criteria of the ATT must stipulate that any arms transfer that seriously impairs poverty reduction strategies or development must be prohibited. Now, we must caveat that. This does not mean that legitimate arms transfers will be prevented because, of course, as we all know, the legitimate arms transfers are necessary in certain cases to protect the spaces necessary for development. The scope of the ATT must also include all arms and ammunition that are having a major impact on development, in particular small arms and light weapons, and of course the ammunition that critically makes this lethal. Fourthly, the international cooperation and assistance mechanisms must ensure that countries are able to receive the help that they need to become treaty compliant. Now, this assistance has to go well beyond just the simple technology transfers or bureaucratic assistance. They must work within the government's needs and within the development needs of the partner countries. And finally, the implementation requirements of this treaty must oblige all countries to publish accurate, frequent and comprehensive reports on all of their international arms transfers.